welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. Original entity is July 2nd, 1950, and the title is The Sundown Kid. Let's get into it, and thanks for listening. It's Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The Sundown Kid. It was a strange meeting there on the dry sage-covered alkali flat five miles out of the little town of Saguaro. Hopalong pulled up in the shadow of a mesquite tree, squinted through the shimmering heat at the rider moving toward him on the trail, drooped over the saddle horn, his feet hanging loose out of the stirrups, his hat slung around his neck by the chin strap, leaving his head bare to the killing desert sun. Only when the dog-tired roan pulled up alongside him did Hoppy understand it. The kid was out of his head. No. No. Listen to me, Sam. You've got no right to treat me like this. What's the matter, kid? Well, you ought to know what's the matter, Sally. We've been together long enough to know each other's minds, ain't we? I, I can't stand it no more, I tell you. I, I can't stand it. Hmm, sunstroke. Come on over this way, fella. Let's get out of that sun. Yeah. Yeah, get out of the sun. Sun? <laughs> Why do I care about the sun? Wind. Rain, winter blizzards. Come on now, come on. Yeah, I've seen them all, Sally. On the move. All is on the move. Ever since you gave me the sign. Come on, Sonny, snap out of it. Never forget that night, you know, when you told me. The kid was pale and sweating from the heat. His hair matted on his forehead. Hoppy started to put his hat back on, then saw something else. We didn't have to split up, you know. Hmm, bullet crease over the ear. Looks like you've been in a gunfight, Sonny. Yeah, come on now. Snap out of it. No. Don't, Sal, please. You're out of your head, kid. Get hold of yourself. Sally, don't hit me. Don't. Come on. Uh, uh, huh? That's it, Sonny. Look at me. Who, who are you? Hop along, Cassidy. Oh, what happened? Don't ask me. Looks like you've been in a gunfight for one thing. And got yourself a little too much sun. Sun? Gunfight? Yeah, bullet crease over your ear. I... I don't remember. Well, don't try to now. I wish I had some water, mister, but I'm as dry as you are. Five hot miles to town, but two miles to the north is a ranch on Clear Creek. I stopped there a while ago. I... I could use some water, I reckon. We'd better go back there. You stay on that horse? Yeah, I can make it. Only a few minutes from here. We can hold it. What's the matter? Out of dust down the trail there. It's like a bunch of riders coming out from town. Maybe we better wait. Maybe maybe they got water. You uh you sure you don't remember anything about a gunfight? Yeah. I was thinking yeah, they've stopped. They're trailing someone. That's a posse, Sonny. Why are you looking at me? I got no reason to. Except for that bullet crease. Want to stay here and find out what they want? You're playing them face up. That's the way I like it. I told you I got nothing to hide. Okay. We better get up the canyon to that ranch house. Mort Robertson. Yeah. Before we mosey up to the sheriff, I think we better find out more about that bullet crease. Let's go. a few minutes after the meeting on the plane that Hoppy and the kid ride up to the door of Mort Robertson's ranch house on Clear Creek. You all 
All right? Yeah. Better get rid of your horse here for the time being. There you go, boy. We'll do to have the sheriff spot him around here. I, I just stopped by here a while ago, and I... Eddie. Hello, Kitty. Come in. You seem to know each other. Yes, Eddie and I are old friends. What's wrong? Eddie, you like look like you've been in a fight. Picked up a bullet crease somewhere. A gunfight. Eddie... He you... doesn't remember much about what happened, Miss. Maybe we'd better find a place to stretch you out, Eddie. There's a bed in here. You got any water, Kitty? I... I'm awful dry. Of course. Right away. Just lie down there and, and make yourself comfortable. Oh. You feel better? Yeah. Look, Eddie, I don't want to crowd you. But you better try to think. Right now. I I can't think. It's all a blank. When does the blank start? Last night. Now, don't ask me any more questions, Cassidy. My head hurts. I... Okay, it's your funeral. What do you mean? I mean I'm walking out right now. Unless you want to give me the whole story. Oh, I... Here you are, Eddie. Oh, thanks. What do you mean you're walking out, Mr. Cassidy? What is it? There's a sheriff's posse down on the flat. I think they're looking for Eddie. Why, Eddie? I... I'll try. I'll, I'll try to think. That's better. What's the last thing you remember? Mm. The cantina. I hit town about nine last night. Been away for more than a year. I couldn't stand it any longer. I had to see Sally. Sally? Oh, that's his... his wife. Yeah. Well, I guess I had too much to drink. Anyway, I left about eleven and headed for her place down at the edge of town. I remember knocking on the door and the funny look on her face when she let me in and I... Then what? That's all. That's all I remember. Next thing I knew, you were hitting me in the face out in the trail. Listen. The posse. Stay right where you are, Eddie. Come on, miss. We haven't seen him, understand? Uh, uh, all right. Go ahead. Afternoon, miss. Oh, Sheriff. Mind if I come in? Of course not. I won't make no bones about it, Miss Kitty. We're looking for Eddie Langtree. Or should I say, the sundown kid. Seems they call him that now he's an outlaw. Outlaw? Nothing real serious till now. But I hear he's got into a few scrapes during the past year over to sundown and points out. What do you mean, uh, till now, Sheriff? This is Mr. Cassidy, Sheriff. Uh, how do you do? Well, to put her direct, Eddie Langtree's about three jumps ahead of a long rope. He, uh, he killed his wife last night. Shot her. I know he thinks a lot of you and your uncle, Miss Kitty. Figured this is the first place he'd head for. Fair tracks leading up here from the flat. He's, he's not here. I said there was a pair of tracks leading up here. One set is mine. And, and the other belongs to my uncle. He was in town last night, got home late. If you don't mind, I'll, uh... Take me a look in that other room. Hmm. Who's that empty glass belong to? Me. I got dizzy from the sun and flopped on the bed for a spell. Hmm. Get in touch with me if he shows around here. Of course. I think you're lying, but there ain't much I can do right now. Nothing here, boys. He must be down in the flat. Right, sir. I still away, go, miss. Cassidy. Goodbye. Phew. How do you get out of there? The window. He must be down in the barn. Oh, we'll wait till they get out of sight, then we'll take a look. <laughs> This 
you're here. Okay. Stay where you are. It's me, kid, Cassidy. They gone? Yeah. Okay. Why the gun? Mort over there. You gonna put it away, it is? Yeah. Come on. Mort wanted to give me away. Give me the gun, kid. Sure, here I... Huh? What's the matter? Well, this ain't my gun. Well, you were packing it, weren't you? Yeah. But look, it's a Walker Colt, an old one. I had a brand new Frontier with my initials on the handle. Let's see that. Two shots fired. Hmm. Why'd you want to give the kid away, Mort? Well, I... I, I can answer that, Mr. Cassidy. On account of me. He knows I... Well, I think a lot of Eddie and... And I don't want my niece mixed up with a murderer. Murderer? Well, what do you mean? Wait a minute, kid. You heard about it, Mort? I was in town last night when it happened. You didn't tell me, Uncle Mort. Well, I what? knew it'd break your heart, Kitty. Figure you'd hear soon enough. About what? Tell me. Tell me what it is. Your wife, Sally. Sally? Oh, no. She was shot last night. You... You gotta believe me, Cassidy. All of you... I wouldn't kill Sal. I, I couldn't. I love her. I... Yes, Eddie. I... I know you love her. You... You do believe me, don't you, Kitty? I think we all do, Eddie. Now, tell me. What happened between you and Sal? Why'd you split up a year ago? Usual reason, I reckon. Another guy. Who? I don't know. We had a fight and I left. Hit the trail. Kind of went wild for a year. Got into trouble, got into jail a couple of times. Busted out. Got blamed for a lot of things I didn't do. They called me the sundown kid like I was an outlaw or something. Uh, then what? Sally had a hold on me. I never knew what it was. But I finally gave up. I had to come back to her. That's how I ended up in the cantina last night. But I... I never killed her. You gotta believe that. We believe it, Eddie. Yeah? I'm sorry for what I did. I want you to know I believe you, too. Thanks, Mort. Come on, Eddie. Let's get back up to the house. You need some rest. Yeah. I'm... I'm awful tired. Um, uh, Mort. Yes? Yeah. You said you believed in him. How far does that go? As far as you want it to go. Will you help me? Will you help me clear him? Yeah. Anything you say. Good. We're right under Sawara right now. It was two o'clock when Hoppy and Mort Robertson left the ranch house on Clear Creek. After three now, as they pulled up in front of Sheriff Pardee's office in Saguaro. There he is, on the porch. Evening, Sheriff. Oh, evening, Cassidy. Mort. Putting up a new poster, eh? That's right. Hmm, $500 reward, dead or alive. Eddie Langtry, alias the Sundown Kid. Dead or alive? Yeah. The alive part don't mean nothing. If they bring him in at all, it'll be feet first. That's the usual custom around here? When a man kills a woman, it is. Any objection? Yeah. I'm listening. Where I come from, a man's entitled to a trial. The kid's had his trial. He was heard to threaten Sal over at the cantina last night. You seen him going there. He was seen leaving town early this morning. So that means he killed her. In my book, it does. I guess you and I own different editions. Let me give you a tip, Cassidy. I don't know how it is where you come from, but if there's one thing that'll make the men of this town see red, it's a woman killer. They won't rest till they grind the kid's carcass into the dust. And anything you say will only make a matter. I'm not defending woman killers. I'm saying there's a good chance Eddie Langtry isn't one. Any idea who it is? I hear she was seeing another man. Who told you that? I keep my ears open. If there's another man, that means there's another suspect. You ever hear that said, Mort? Can't say I knew much about Sal, Sheriff. I knew her pretty well, Cassidy. 
And as far as I know, she wasn't courting anyone else. Hmm. Who saw the kid go into her house? Liz McKinnon. Lives down the street, just across from the cantina. Guess we'll get down and have a talk with her. Thanks, Sheriff. Uh, Cassidy. Yeah? You're mighty interested in the kid for an outsider. Ain't seen him lately, have you? That's one for you to chew on till we get back, Sheriff. Stick around. We won't be long. I tell you, that's all I know, Mr. Cassidy. I saw him go in and... What time? About 11. I went in the house here and into the back room to take off my hat. I, I thought I heard a noise, so I came back out and opened the door. I saw him leave. It's almost a hundred yards from here to Sal's doorway. It was dark last night. I don't care. I know it was him. I could tell by... by his clothes. That's it. I could what tell What did by... he have on? Why, why, blue denims and a gray shirt. And... How do you know they were blue? You can't tell colors on a dark night at ten feet. Say nothing of three hundred. Stop it. Go on, Liz. We're waiting. You're lying, Liz. I'm not. I tell you, I'm... Forget the hysterics. Eddie Lankry had on a pair of black leather shaps when I met him on the trail this morning. That takes care of your identification. Now I want the truth this time. You and Sam were pretty close friends. You had a gentleman friend you were seeing on the sly. If anyone would know who he is, you would. I, I don't know anything about it. I hope you know what you're doing, Liz. There's a sign in the sheriff's office that'll send every man in this town out tomorrow morning hell-bent on bringing Eddie Lankry in dead. They'll never take him alive, even if he surrenders. On your say-so, they'll shoot him on sight. If that happens, Liz, if they kill him for someone else's crime, you'll have something to think about for a long, long time. You going to talk, Liz? Or are we going to stand here all night? I've told you all I know. Come on, Mort. I'm not telling you the kid is innocent, Sheriff. I'm just saying there's a chance he is. That woman is lying. I shot her story full of holes. Coffee. What is it, Mort? The posse. They got word somewhere. The kid's at the ranch. They're on the way. All right, Sheriff. You're going to let them shoot that kid down in cold blood? I, I don't know. Golly, Cassidy, what can I do? Mort, take off right now over the hills. You can cut across the saddle and get there ahead of the posse. Get him out of there. Off the ranch, you understand? Okay. We'll be right behind you. He's at Clear Creek? Yeah. Who tipped him off? No idea. Look, you got to stop him. You're the only one who can do it. They'll say I'm out of my head. You're acting like it right now, Sheriff. Look, it makes as much sense this way as the other. The real killer, the other man she was seeing, was in the house with her when the kid knocked on the door. He hustled into the back room when the kid comes in, sees them in each other's arms and shoots them both. Then, thinking to make it look like murder and suicide, he switches gun with the kid and leaves. Not knowing he only creased the kid, but he'd come to in a few minutes and walk out around midnight. Hey... If the murder was discovered last night, how come they let the kid leave town this morning? It wasn't discovered last night. They found Sal's body at 8 o'clock this morning. So, that's who it was. Liz! The posse just left. They're going to kill him. He's innocent. Sheriff, you've got to stop What do you mean? I, I lied. He told me he'd kill me if I talked, but I don't care now. Who are you talking about? I saw him leave the house, too, before Eddie did. He was seeing Sal, like Mr. Cassidy said. He's talking about Mort Robertson, Sheriff. That's why I thought the killing was discovered last night. Morton knew all about it, and he hasn't been in town all day. Jumping catfish, they'll kill Come on, we've got to stop him before he gets hold of that kid. What's the matter, Kitty? Why? You're all worried about me, ain't you? I can always tell when you're worried. Your eyes get a look. I, uh... I ain't worth it, Kitty. I... Oh, I'd die for you, Eddie. You know, sometimes a man has to get himself in a spot like this to see things clear. It's kind of like I've been riding in the fog all my life. And suddenly it lifts and I can see the sun. Oh, Eddie. Oh, kid, you're an angel. If they get me, kid, remember I did see the light. Don't even think it, Eddie. Mort, what is it? The posse's on the way here. we got to get out. Well, when they leave? Fifteen minutes. We'll hit up into the hills. Have you got a gun, Eddie? Just that old walker somebody swapped me for. But it'll do. Here. Take 
your rifle? No place to pack it. Your horse saddle? Yeah, behind the house. Good. Let's get him. Goodbye, Kit. You'll make it, Eddie. You'll make it. I'm going to try. I'll go up to Mort's room and watch for them. I can see way down the trail. Hurry up, Kit. Go on now. Good luck, Eddie. Oh, thanks. Good luck. <laughs> Hold it, Sheriff. Oh, see anything? Look, across the canyon, past the ranch house. Yeah. Climbing out of the canyon, going across the ridge. We'll never catch him now. He'll shoot the kid in cold blood. Cook up some story for the posse. Only one thing to do, Sheriff. Give me your Winchester. You'll never make it, Cassidy. That's 1,500 yards. Wind blowing, moving target. I said target. give me the rifle. You're liable to hit the kid. I've got to try. Better get down and find me a stone for a gun rest. Ain't that much time. They're almost up to the notch. <laughs> Pull up, kid. Huh? Well, what are we... I said pull up. Okay. What's the idea, Mort? You ain't going no farther, Eddie. You're stopping right here. Huh? You turned on me, see? You tried to kill me and make a getaway before that posse caught up. They'll believe that, Eddie. Because that's what they want to believe. What are you talking about, Mort? Put down that gun. Why? I'm going to kill you with it, ain't I? You're crazy, Mort. No. I'm smart. The 500, huh? You want to... Cut it. I loved her too, kid. She was going to marry me. Till she heard you were coming back. Sal? You and Sal? Yeah. She won't do it no more, though. You won't either. If you got any prayers, kid, you better stop. (laughs) Mort, what happened? Rifle shot. Right through the head. You all right, kid? Yeah. He killed Sal. He just told me. We know. Golly, one second later and he would have... Where were you, Hoppy? Across the canyon. We saw you heading for the notch. (laughs) Mind if I say you're a pretty fair shot with a rifle? Uh, Uh, Sheriff. uh, Sheriff, maybe you'd better hustle down to the ranch house and uh, head off the posse. They're coming up the canyon now. Tell them we've taken care of the murder of Sally Langtray. Kid? Yes, sir? Uh, some of the boys outside in the posse want to talk to you. Why? Mm, well... Apologize is a kind of weak word to use on a man you've been hell-bent to kill. But it's uh, something along those lines. I see. I already gave him a prime piece of my mind. You may as well do the same thing, Eddie. Uh, well, I uh, I think you know how we all feel, kid. Uh, huh. Kind of like crawling in the nearest coyote hole and pulling it in after. You could have been feeling a lot worse about now, Sheriff. Yeah. Go ahead, Eddie. Talk to them. Don't go away, kid. I'll be right back. Don't worry. I'll never go away. You see, uh, I got a lot of apologizing to do, too. It's all right now. Everything's all right. You know, Kitty, by tomorrow I'll be known as the best rifle shot in the Southwest. How's your shoulder feel, honey? Mm, Pretty sore. A four fifty sharp rifle isn't exactly a woman's weapon. I've seen him knock a grown man right off his feet. I... I wasn't thinking of that. You see, I thought of Mort right away when you said she'd been killed with a walker coat. I knew he had one, but I couldn't believe he... Sure. Oh, I had the rifle in my hand when I went up to his room to look for the posse. That's when I found Eddie's frontier with his initials on the handle. That's when I knew it was Mort. So you just laid the barrel down on the windowsill and pointed her up the trail and... Don't, Sheriff. I don't want to think about it anymore. All right, Kitty. Don't worry. The Sheriff and I have got a secret to keep, though. Not that I want to ride around with a barred reputation because of Eddie. Eddie? Yeah. Men are funny, Kitty. They got a lot of pride. like to think they do most everything better than a woman. Don't know exactly how Eddie'd uh, take it if he knew his bride to be could hit a moving target at a thousand yards with a four fifty sharp rifle. <laughs>
This means it's so long from Hopalong Cassidy once again. He's riding back to the Bar 20 bunkhouse to sit with California and all the other waddies round an open fire and tell of the exciting little escapade you just heard. If you'd like more of these two-gun adventures of Hoppies, don't forget you can see him in the fine Hopalong Cassidy pictures at your local theater. Meanwhile, we're hoping you'll tune in next time Hopalong rides the airwaves to bring you more action out of the Old West. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Sundown Kid was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.